Hi, I'm Lois Vogel Sharp. Today is July 19th, 2018, and um, I received a poem um, yesterday, and I want to read it, but before I read it, I, I want to say something that's really on my heart right now. And this happened because I had a conversation with somebody yesterday that was very close to me. And uh, in the conversation, um, some things came out that made me realize, as Christians, we have a message to bring to the world. And the scripture verses John 3.16, we all know it very well. Let me just say it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But we stop there, and, and the scripture continues to say, He came not into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We seem to be throwing out the scripture of salvation to people. And what we're doing is, we're doing it in a way of condemnation. And we are doing such an injustice to Jesus because Jesus sat with the sinners. When Mary Magdalene came, all right, and knelt at his feet and her tears fell on his feet and she wiped his feet, that was considered a form of worship. And they thought to themselves, how could he allow her to do that? Because we all know that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, okay? And she also had seven demons cast out of her. So she had some issues in life, and yet Jesus let her worship him and wipe his feet. We have to stop having a Christian self-righteous attitude where we come at the world and we say, you're going to hell. Nobody has the right to tell anybody that they're going to go to hell because nobody in this planet Earth sees the heart of each human being like the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit does. So we have no right to tell any sinner that we call a sinner that they're going to hell because only God sees in the heart and understands why that person might be in that sin in the first place. And do we have the right to pass judgment on anything when it comes to that, we do not. We are called to love. You know them by their fruits, and the fruit of God is love. It's not condemnation, it's not judgment, and it's not deciding because the scripture says that something is a sin that we have now determined that because that person is in that sin that they are now going to go to hell. There are many sins that so-called Christians are walking around with that you don't see. And yet they're deep-rooted inside of them. And God sees them as filthiness too. But you don't see it from the outside because they're not showing you. They might be going behind closed doors and doing things that you don't have a clue about. And then coming out and acting like everything's wonderful. And then sending the judgments out towards you to repent and stop doing these things in your life. There were some preachers out there that got caught that actually did that very thing. They were putting out basic judgments on everybody and they themselves were living in a major sin. So we have to stop. When I spoke with this person yesterday, it brought to light how judging we actually sound to the world, to the sinners. And what is sin? Basically, think about it. We have rules. Mankind made up their rules of what we are allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do. And basically put those rules out in regards to what God said. The Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife and all these things. Thou shalt not steal. All right? Love thy neighbor as thyself. All these things are out there for us to follow. So man-made rules taken from God's basic rules. So when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me, 
that is not a judgment. That is basically a love message saying that this is the way to the truth and to the life and to being blessed by God. Those that are followers of Jesus, we follow what he says. When Jesus says that something is a sin or an abomination to the Father, whatever the word you want to call it, because some sins are abominations and they say it, it says it in the word, that doesn't make us the judge of somebody that might be living in that sin. Because you don't know why they're living in that sin. A perfect example, and this is something I discussed on the phone last night. If a person looks at their neighbor and sees something they want and they go and they take it just because they want it, that's stealing, isn't it? It's a sin to steal. We know that. But if somebody is starving, starving, and walks into a store and maybe steals a loaf of bread because their family's starving and they, they have no money and, and they have no other recourse at that moment in time and they steal the loaf of bread, that's still stealing, right? But how do you think God looks at both those sins? Does he look at them the exact same way? I don't think so. One is desperation and one is just pure selfishness. And that's what God sees. And we don't. And we're so quick to throw judgments at people. Well, you shouldn't have done this to me. And why did you act this behavior? Why did you do that? And it doesn't make sense to me. You shouldn't have acted that way. When in fact, the person was very weak in that area. And they didn't purposely mean to hurt somebody. We hurt people all the time in this world. And we don't even mean it. How many of you out there? Feel offended by me because I haven't answered your email or I haven't responded to you the way you felt I should have. A lot of you have wanted to friend me on my Facebook page and I, I haven't friended anybody for months and months. Because I have so many friends now that I can't even keep up with it. So if I allow all these friends, what's going to happen is everything's just going to pass on down the line. I won't see one thing on my Facebook page. And that's not what it's supposed to be about, is it? It doesn't mean that I don't care or I don't love you. It means that I can't have a 50 million friends on my Facebook page. Those that are interested can find me on the YouTube channel. I send my message, my videos out of my Facebook page all the time. But I can't friend everybody because I won't be able to see anything of importance. So there are things that people can get offended on. And in reality, it doesn't mean that I don't love you or care about you, but you can feel that on your end because I'm one person and you're many. So I can't deal with the many on the level that you can focus on me and listen to what I have to say. And there's a reason why I'm the one speaking, because I'm giving messages of hope. I'm giving messages of things that are going to change your life and make you understand the message of Jesus is simple. It's called love. And the Bible explains it that no greater love than if a man lays down his life for his friend. That's true love, which is what Jesus did for us. The reason why he's the only way into heaven and to the Father is because of a simple, simple message. Jesus is the only man that came into this world that was without sin. He was the Son of God, and He was the only one that was the perfect sacrifice to take our place for our sins. That is why He's the only way into heaven. It's not that He's being mean. It was done out of pure love. Everything He does is out of pure love. And we misconstrue it because we blame God for things that, is not, that are not His fault. This messed up world the way it is has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with evil. And it has everything to do with man not wanting to follow his rules. The one that created us. If God is my father, it's like being a parent. You have your rules for your children. You have to eat your dinner before you eat your piece of cake. Well, the child wants to eat the piece of cake before dinner and you tell them, no, you have to eat your dinner first. The child thinks you're being so mean. When in fact, why are you saying that? Because you know that the meal is the nourishment and the cake is the garbage. But they don't know that. They know the cake tastes good. 
And that's all they're thinking of. And that's all they want. So you telling them they can't have it when they want it. You are so mean to them. This is what we do with God. God telling us certain things are sin. Or we shouldn't do this. We shouldn't do that. Boy, that's so mean. Because our flesh wants to do certain things that it wants to do. And as being human beings, we have lusts of the flesh that we just deal with. So God telling me that I can't do something like eat 10 pieces of pie that I want to because it will create some kind of a physical condition that won't be good for me, like maybe diabetes or something like that. Boy, that's so mean. I mean, that pie is so delicious. Why can't I just eat it and enjoy it? This is what we do. And we get mad at God if we eat the 10 pieces and then we get sick to our stomach. We think, wow, God, why did you let that happen to me? You see, we have a free will to make choices every day. But with that free will, we're required by God to make right choices. Choices that he says is are correct as our parent. He's our parent. Without parental supervision, things get messed up. Same in families. If there's no parental supervision, the kids run amok and they do whatever. Okay? They do whatever they want. Okay? And we have to understand that and get a heads up. And we have to understand that if we're preaching this message of Jesus to the world, we can't do it with attitude. Like you are going to hell because you are living in a sin. That is no way to get somebody saved. It's the goodness of the Lord and the kindness of the Lord that leads people to salvation. And that's love. You can't preach a message of salvation to a sinner, a so-called sinner, unless you are able to sit next to them and talk to them. My late husband years ago brought a man to Jesus who nobody could convince that Jesus was the Christ. He had an attitude and there was no way he was believing it. He didn't want to believe it. So he liked to drink beer. So my late husband said to him, I'll tell you what, I'll go with you to the bar down the block and have a beer with you if you let me talk to you about Jesus. And he said, okay, fine. So that's what they did. They walked right into the bar. They sat at the bar. They both ordered a beer. He sat with the guys and he talked about Jesus. And after he talked about Jesus, he said, you know what? I get it now. I get what you're telling me. And I accept him as the Lord of my life. A week or so later, he died. He died. Now, if he would have kept bombarding him, you need Jesus, you need Jesus, you need to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, or you're going to hell, and he kept getting that attitude, hey, don't shove it down my throat. Where would it have gotten him? Nowhere. So we have to listen to the rest of the scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him would be saved. We have to stop the condemnation part of it. Because we are doing that as Christians. How many people were killed under the guise of Christians? It has been a fault over this over the centuries christians thinking we've got it right you've got it wrong and then we stop showing any love and we just point the fingers and that's how they t that's how they're taking it if we can't say it in love it's not going to be received and that's the point i'm making that's the point god is making we need to pull back a little bit on our telling people they're going directly to hell, especially children that are being shoved something down their throat by their parents and they don't have a clue what's the truth. You can't blame a child who's not of the age of accountability and tell them they're going to burn in hell for eternity because they're believing something their parents told them or they're believing some feeling that they have that they believe is right. There are a, God is merciful, let's put it that way. And there's going to be a lot of people in heaven that you didn't think was going to be there. And some of the ones that you thought were going to be there, they're not going to be there. 
Because they were the ones that had the real sin. They the one, were the ones that blatantly went against the scriptures. When the other person just kept falling on their face in weakness. And God saw fit to have mercy. Because they loved Jesus with all their heart and soul and mind and strength. And yet, they tried to walk the walk and then would fall on their face. And then would get up and try to walk the walk and fall on their face again. But would get up. That's what Jesus is looking for. True love. True love, even if you fail at what you do. He would rather you try and fail than not try. And that's the message of Jesus. The message of love. And that's the true gospel of Jesus Christ that is seems to be being thrown at people in a way of condemnation. Therefore, people are rebelling. We want this nation to come together in Jesus and the Father as one. We better stop telling people they're going to burn in hell and start reaching out to them and in love and stop looking at their sins and go beyond it and realize what we need to do to bring peace and the truth of who Jesus is and what God's rules are. He doesn't have rules to be mean. He has rules to save us from ourselves because there are consequences for sin. And that's the reason why he shows us the way out of sin so that we don't have a consequence and get destroyed by the devil. It's all to protect us from the devil. So with that, let me read the poem that I got. Okay, it's a little dark in here, so let me see if I can read it. Praise his holy name. There will be nothing that is the same. When you leave here and are changed in the twinkling of an eye, there will be no more time to sigh. You will fly through the heavens to meet your Lord in the air. Do not regret your old life. There is nothing to compare. You will have joy that is unspeakable. You will glow with the glory of what you thought was unreachable. Once you are gathered from the four corners of the heavens, there will be no more of that leaven. It will be a time to rule and reign with the king. Nations will be subdued by his ability to ring. He will ring loud and clear the message of salvation, and it will reach to every nation. When you are walking around your house with doubt, Look up to heaven and give a loud shout. Praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Proclaim it to the world and let all hear it. Time is running out to be accepted in the rapture. Make sure your lamps are filled with oil so you can be captured. Captured by the one who loves you with all that he is. Make sure you do not miss this and are left in your sins. Time to get ready for the bride and be adorned in her beauty. The groom will come for her. It is his sworn duty. Look up, your redemption does draw nigh. The rapture is imminent, and you can give a relief with a sigh. A sigh of knowing that freedom is near. To all those who love Jesus, the message is clear. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Make sure you're in one mind and one accord. Keep slapping, keep, keep, keep saying the praises to the Father. He loves you when you sing out and holler. Joy, joy, joy truly does come in the morning. Time to rejoice and stop all the running. Stick to what is truth and do not dismay. For when I tell you time is short, there will be no delay. One way is for Jesus is one way in Jesus is the truth. Make sure you accept this, for it is living proof. He died, he rose, and will come back again. This is not a game, but truth, and you must not pretend. With all your heart, receive Jesus today. Make sure that you do not delay. I tell you, he is coming to gather his sheep. It will be just like Bo Peep. He will find every lost soul and bring you all home. Rejoice in the Lord always, for the Lord is your Savior. If you accept this truth, you will taste of the flavor. It will be sweet to your soul. There will be no more whole. That leaves you feeling empty. You will have it plenty. The words of this page 
are ones that explain what will happen if you listen, you will gain. You gain love, peace, joy, and many others. You will have, no sis you will have new sisters and new brothers. So peace be unto you. You no longer need to feel blue. For the time has come for all to be one. Love is the answer. Make sure you live without the world's cancer. Love, 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 I say. There will be no more delay. The time is at hand for all to take their stand. Join the army of the Lord and pick up your sword. Fight the good fight of faith. You all know what is your fate. Eternity with the Father who created the universe. There will be no more of this earthly perverse. Freedom, I say, as never before. Just open your heart. Open the door. Accept Yeshua. He died so you could be free. Accept him today. That is the key. Love, 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 I say. No more delay. And that was it. I woke up, got that, and just wrote it down. And it just flows onto the page. God is amazing. I've said basically everything I have to say. Um, Lois Vogel Sharp. Um, you're in my prayers. I thank everybody, um, those that have been giving, those that send me little gifts. I appreciate everything. Matter of fact, someone made me a purse. Uh, the person that made me the purse out there, I carry it around all the time. I love it. It was just exactly what I needed at that moment in time. So I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart. I just want you to know that um, you're all part of the kingdom of God. Those that accept Jesus as the Lord of your life, don't delay in doing that because he truly is the way in. And it's because he sacrificed his life so that we could gain ours. That's the only reason Jesus is the only answer. It's because he's the only man that defeated Satan and didn't fall into the temptations of sin. So he was the ultimate sacrifice that was acceptable to the Father. And that's the reason he came into the world. So is that a message of hatred? Is that a message of condemnation? No, it's a message of true, pure, the purest of love that could ever be sent out there to the world. So have a blessed day, and I pray for you daily. So I'll be back when he sends me back again.